when the ordination lineage first came, it was Shantarakshita, one of the great Indian sages who came uh, in the 8th century, I believe. And he brought the requisite number of monks, uh, and they traveled together over the Himalaya mountains into Tibet. And he didn't bring any fully ordained nuns with him, uh, possibly because he thought the journey would be too, too difficult for them. But I think more important is because if you had a group of monks and a group of nuns traveling together and you told the population that they were celibate, some people would go, oh yeah? So I think by just bringing monks, he made it very clear, you know, that these monks are celibate. Yeah, and uh, as it happened, he didn't, he didn't bring nuns. Uh, the Karmapa has said that he's known of some um, ordinations uh, that have occurred in Tibet. Uh, I don't have the details on those, but in any case, it's not something that's popularly accepted because in order for nuns to be fully ordained, you need a certain number of bhikshunis, the fully ordained nuns, and a certain number of bhikshus, the fully ordained monks, to give the bhikshuni ordination for women. And there's never been that requisite number. And so they, they therefore say that the lineage has died out. Yeah. Then there's interest by many people uh, to see if it can be started up again. And there's several proposals for it. One proposal is uh, because the lineage for full ordination of women, which is where my lineage comes from, uh, exists in Taiwan and China, Korea, Vietnam, uh, to bring the complements of nuns uh, necessary for the ordination from the East Asian tradition and then have the complement of monks be from the Tibetan tradition. But the Tibetan monks say, those are two different Vinaya lineages and we can't mix them. Okay. Then the other proposal is that uh, since it's actually the monks who give the ordination to have the Tibetan monks themselves give the bhikshuni ordination without the complement of nuns. And then after those nuns have been ordained the proper amount of time, then have them become the complement of nuns. But then other people say, well, is that a perfect ordination, whether you do it that, if you do it that way or not. In East Asia, in China, Taiwan, and so on, they consider that ordination valid, if it's just the bhikshu sangha. Okay, the, the Tibetans, personally speaking, I think that, and actually this was told to me by a, uh, a Tibetan who I, I respect quite a bit, and he said he thinks it is more of an emotional uh, uh, decision, even though it's phrased in terms of Vinaya rules and so forth, because it's been... Uh, this way with only fully ordained monks for over a millennia. And so to change it is, uh, you know, involves a changing of mentality, a changing of perspective, and it would be like the whole tradition would have to have that change. Yeah, and His Holiness Dalai Lama Oh, you know, he's very much for introducing the bhikshuni lineage, but he said he can't do it alone. It has to be, uh, you know, an effort of all the Tibetan Buddhist traditions. And some of the monks in some of the traditions are quite conservative. Yeah. So uh, you might ask, the question may then arise, well, how come you're in the Tibetan uh, Buddhist tradition, but you're a, a bhikshuni, a fully ordained nun. How is that possible? So uh, I went to Taiwan to take the full ordination. I had my novice ordination 
uh, with Chiamte Ling Rinpoche in 1977. And then I wanted to take the full ordination in Taiwan. I went to His Holiness and asked his permission to do that. He very clearly gave me his permission. And so in 1986, then I went to Taiwan and I took the Bhikshuni ordination there. Okay. So in setting up the abbey, we use the Vinaya tradition that is practiced in Taiwan. It's called the Dharma Guptaka Vinaya. And it is a different lineage than the one practiced in, uh, in Tibet. So we say our Vinaya lineage is the Dharma Guptaka, but our practice lineage is Tibetan. Okay? And uh, nobody seems to have any qualms with that. <laughs> 